In this short video, we're going to take a look at getting started with Amazon EKS, which is their Kubernetes service, and how to create new users so that people other than the admin can log into the cluster. If you go to the official AWS EKS documentation, you'll be greeted with a long list of steps and options and things to copy and paste to launch your EKS cluster and worker nodes and configure VPCs and IAM and all that stuff. It's quite lengthy and error prone and I failed multiple times trying to get this to work correctly. An alternative and a, a suggestion that I might make that others made for me is to use a tool called EKS Control or Cuddle, however you want to call it. EKS Control is a tool from the folks at Weaveworks that makes it a lot simpler to install a or, or to boot up a cluster of uh, EKS. Basically, you download it to your machine. If you're on a Mac, this is this is what I did, and then you just run EKS create cluster. Very simple. No messing around with cloud formations and VPCs and bringing up the nodes manually and all that stuff. It will take a handful of defaults that you can customize at the command line. But we're going to we're going to experience this right now. So first notice that we do not have a Kubernetes cluster. We're not attached to one. But what we're going to do here is create a new cluster in EKS and we'll give it a name. So I'm going to hit enter and we should watch it start to do its thing. If we want to look inside of the EKS console, if we refresh this, we should see a new cluster is not yet active, not coming up. Let's take a look at the cloud formation. So this is what's happening. Okay. So the cluster is being created behind the scenes. We can we can see in our cloud formation stacks that an EKS cluster is being created. Quick thing to point out is that I'm logged in as an admin level user in, uh, in AWS. And when this cluster gets created, it will automatically log me in as, as me. So I'll have full access to the cluster once it gets created, and we'll take a look at that. But in, in the next step, what we want to do is create a new user and allow somebody on a different machine to log into our cluster at reduced privileges. So we'll keep an eye on this. And, uh, and wait for it to come up. And now we have the control plane created. And now we have the worker nodes completed. Obviously, I sped up the video and cut out parts where we were sitting there waiting. We started this, if you were paying attention at all, at 9 a.m. Takes a little bit for the cluster to come up. But it is now up. If we click on the EKS console, we should see that it is created. Now, if we come back to our command line here, if we do run a Kubernetes command, we can see that now it works. And we've got two nodes created. And we are ready to roll. Now, I'm logged in as, like I said, my admin account. But when I give this to somebody else, developers or whomever, I want them to have lower privileges and I don't want to just give out my keys to, to everyone. So what we want to do now is create a new user that other people can use to access this cluster. And in AWS, that means creating a um, a new a new user here in, in the IAM management console. So let's do that. We'll click add user. We'll call this the cube user two. 
and we're going to give it programmatic access. We don't need this user to be able to log into the console. Now, we want this user to be able to see our cluster. So we're going to create a new policy that allows this new user, which otherwise will have zero other privilege, to, to access our, our cluster. So we want uh, it to access EKS. We want it to be able to list and read the clusters in EKS. But if you're even more paranoid, you can restrict the access to a very specific cluster, which we'll do here. We're gonna we're gonna come find our cluster over here. Click on it. Find its ARN, and we're gonna restrict this, this this policy that we're creating here. We're gonna restrict it to accessing just this cluster. So that looks good. Let's review it. We're going to give this a cube user policy name and create the policy. Now let's come back to creating our user. And maybe we need to refresh. If we look at cube, we should see that. And now we'll give this new user. This, this new policy that we just created. So click next, click through, unless you want to tag it, and say cr create user, cube-user2. So from here, we can see the access keys, we can see the secret, and, uh, and we'll, we'll show it for now. So what we want to do now is add this user to Kubernetes so that when we log in, we can use Kubernetes roles and role bindings to associate this user with particular permissions. Now in AWS, that means, or in EKS, that means editing a uh, authentication config map that gets installed here. So if we do get config map from cube system, But we want to edit edit this config map. So we do kubectl edit config map cube system, and we'll come down here. Take a look at app users. If the space is correct here, AR, ARN. Now the user ARN will come from our IM console here. Let's look at this and filter by cube, and we'll see our new cube user here. The ARN is right here. Copy that. And user name, cube user two. And the groups we want to give it access to will be will be one of the cube roles that we have. So if we do cube CTO get cluster role we can see the we can see this the different cluster roles that we can we can extend to our new user. I'll just give it system masters for right now. So that looks good, right? Quit. Now we've set up the cluster so that this new cube user can log in.
Let's pretend to be this new user. So let's say we're on a different machine. We don't have access to, to Kubernetes. What we want to do is set up this user to be able to use this new identity and, and log in. With, with AWS, when we configure the, the, um, the cube config file, we also need to leverage this IAM Authenticator plugin to, to kubectl. So you'll need to install this in your on, uh, on your machine so that it is available to um, to the kubectl plugin. The next thing you'll need to install is the Amazon AWS CLI. So we install the Amazon AWS CLI and we should we, we should be able to log into to Amazon and have it verify our, our our credentials and set all that stuff up for for kubectl. So let's install the the AWS CLI. Uh, over here. Install yes, CLI. We're going to install a specific version on this box because newer versions don't don't work the way I want it to on this particular box. We'll set that up. Now we're going to run. It. Now we should have the command line. And we do. We're going to run AWS configure to set up our access key, our set, set up our user here. If we come back here and look at the user, ah, you know what? I didn't write down the secret key. Let's create a new, let's quickly create a new access key and secret key. So we're going to we're going to grab the access key here and the secret key we'll say US West 2 that's fine. And now we should be we should have configured the AWS CLI to know that we are the new user. We are cube user 2. Right? So now what we need to do is set up our cube config file. I have, there's, there, there's no config file there um, to be able to talk to, to uh, the EKS cluster. So let's do AWS EKS. We're going to do update cube config. The name of our cluster was, what was it? Solo test cluster. And the region is US West 2, but I guess that, that should just come from the, the preferences we just set. So let's try run this. And this tells us we got a new cube config file. And if that's the case, we should be able to run kubectl now. And that is not the response I was expecting. Well, now this is turning into a debug why this is not working session. Um, let's take a look at config. That seems, that seems all right. What if we... That seems all right. Well, let's take a look. 
here. Did we get our ARN? Correct. Cube dash user two. That all seems right. Is our cluster up? Yeah. Does not like something. Let's take a look at one thing here. User A. That is misspelled. User A. There we go. You spell things correctly. All right. Now we are connected uh, as a as a user cube dash user two with lower privileges than my admin user, and we can control authorizations using the Kubernetes built-in authorizations. Well, sorry for that little stumble there. Hopefully, you learned something from this. And uh, and come by the the solo blog more more often. Thanks.